I'm 12 years old. I'm in the mall. There's a video game store in this particular mall. It's not a well-known video game store, so I don't remember what the title of it is. I think the store was Fred Meyer. Fred Meyer is like a combination of electronics and groceries and like just a combination of everything. And it also includes this daycare center where you can put your kids while you go shopping. That's something I haven't seen a lot in other stores. But good old Fred Meyer, they got a daycare center. Anyways, I was standing in Fred Meyer for some reason. And to my left, there was a video game store. Or it might have been a general electronics store. But in this store, in this general electronics store, it had kind of a neon glow inside of it. A lot of neon. I think there was like some kind of fog machine. I don't know why. That's what I remember when I think about it. A fog machine and neo lights buzzing all around. And in this store, I saw on the screen... One of the one of the TV screens, there was a GameCube TV screen, there was a PS2 TV screen, and there was an Xbox TV screen. And on each of those screens, there was a demo of their game. You have like the little controller coming out for you to play one of the demos. Well, I was looking at the demo of the GameCube screen, and I saw uh, Mario. Mario uh, from the Nintendo game, Super Mario. And he was wearing this, this backpack. And uh, there was this, this, this piranha plant. But it wasn't like the normal piranha plant from a Mario game. It was like uh, paint. It was like made out of paint. So I went up to this video game demo. Gave it a try. Held down some of the buttons and found out that Mario, the backpack that he was wearing, was actually a giant like water hose, a squirt gun. And the object of the game was to squirt the uh, the piranha plant. And so I did that for a while. And that, my friends, is pretty much the only experience that I have had with Super Mario Sunshine. Until just recently. Because just recently, I have started playing it for the very first time in my life. And I think this is, it's an interesting it's interesting that I know nothing about it, but though, but that that like that is the only experience I have had of it. I I I hadn't even seen the opening cutscene. I hadn't even played like five more seconds of any other level. I think that I I've seen like maybe three seconds of Game Grumps footage from like you know clips that I watched on Game Grumps. But I, I when I saw that Game Grumps were playing Super Mario Sunshine, I deliberately did not watch it. Because I did not want to spoil myself. Because when I was that kid in that electronic store in Fred Meyer in the electronics section, and I was looking at that and I was playing that, I was the most excited I had ever been. I was so excited and it was so cool that there was a new Mario game. And I really wanted to play it. But we did not get a GameCube, my family. We got a PS2. So I didn't get to play it. And so, like, I, I just kind of kept that excitement within me. Kept it within me until this moment right now when I have started playing Super Mario Sunshine. And I gotta say, keeping yourself spoiler-free from a video game really does have an effect. Keeping the hype built up. Keeping, that, keep, keeping, keeping yourself from exposing yourself to the game, right? Watching a Let's Play or something like that. Because, uh, you know, word is going around that, you know, spoilers don't actually affect the, uh, the gameplay. They don't affect what, what you get from it and all that jazz, whatever. Right? That's what word is going around. Actually, at least as far as movies are concerned. Right? You know, if you get spoiled for a movie, it's still going to be a good experience. It's still going to be just as good. But, I think with video games, it's different. Because... I'm playing Super Mario Sunshine, and it is an amazing experience, and it feels like I'm playing a brand new game, even though this game is, I don't know, I think it's over 20 years old, maybe not 20 years old, it is almost 20 years old, 
but it feels like a brand new game to me. And that's amazing. And that's great. And I'm enjoying the experience. I'm actually getting really frustrated with it because there's a lot of things I don't like about it. But it still feels new and fresh and interesting. And there was this level where I was on this bird, this giant bird, and I was supposed to get red coins. And the bird, all the, like the bird is flying in the air and you can fall off the bird if you go, if you, if you're not careful. But then the bird slowly starts turning and you're like, what? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do while the bird's turning? And then the bird turns and then you fall off and die. And then I was like, whoa, wait. I got to figure this out. And so you try again and again and again. And then eventually you figure out that while the bird's turning, you just got to go on because the bird is made out of little, like square sand cubes. And all you got to do is go to it's like on the bird's neck and then wait and wait until he starts turning until he's like 50 50. And then you run on the other side of the cube as he turns. And it was just the most the most magical experience of all time. It was very frustrating, but it was frustrating in a good way. You know what? I don't know if there is a such thing as frustrating in a good way, but it was such a magical experience and I enjoyed it so much. And so um, I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time playing the game that I saved up all of the hype for that I had as a child. It is a magical and wonderful experience, and I hope that other people have done this with a similar game. And if you have, I don't know if anyone has, but if any, any of you folks out there on YouTube have, please leave a comment letting me know what game you did this for. Because I want to know. I don't know. I, I'm just bored. Uh, this has been the Kokino Podcast. Uh, if you haven't noticed, these are going to kind of get weird and, and go in whatever direction that I want them to. And I'm gonna stop trying to appease. I don't know. I don't know. I've been trying. I've been like trying to appease people with this podcast, and I don't like that because I'm not being myself if I try to do that. So I'm gonna stop trying to do that. And uh, yeah, you might get a lot of weird stuff. I know you've gotten a lot of weird stuff even up till this point, but it might even get weirder. You never know. You never know with the Kokino podcast. This is the podcast where you never know what's gonna happen. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good life.